This tutorial is a supplementary session designed as an extension to the free 10 minutes of coding lessons available from the Texas Instruments website. In this session, we look at the mathematics behind the bisection method and create a simple program. The bisection method can help locate a point where a function crosses the x-axis. The bisection method makes some mathematical assumptions, which may be conceptually simplified to a river crossing. If you are standing on one side of a river and you need to get to the other side, at some point your path simply must cross the river. Pick a point somewhere along the path from A to B, let's say P. If we are still on the original side of the river, then we must cross the river somewhere between P and B, otherwise we have already crossed. And so the problem starts again by reassigning the location of A to P in the case where we are yet to cross the river. Each iteration gets closer to finding the river crossing. In mathematics, we calculate the product of the y coordinates to determine if the points are on the same or opposite sides of the x axis. If the function is continuous, just like our path, we can progressively narrow in on the point where the function crosses the axis. In the bisection method, the location of point P is not random. As its name suggests, P is halfway between A and B. Now we have a basic understanding of the bisection method, we can start writing the program. To keep the program simple, we'll assume a couple of things. First, the function is already defined and is continuous over the specified interval. The user will input two starting points on opposite sides of the axes, and the user will determine the number of iterations to be computed by using three request statements, one for point A, one for point B, and finally, one for the number of iterations, which governs the accuracy of our solution. As the user determines the number of iterations, a for loop is appropriate. P is halfway between points A and B. Now comes the decision component. f of a times f of p is negative, then the function crosses the x-axis between a and p. So, so p becomes the new b. Otherwise, p becomes the new a. That's it. That's all we need for the program. To make the program a little more interesting, we can watch the iterative process narrow in on the x-axis intercept. To do this, we we'll use a couple of display commands. All of these calculations happen so fast, so we could slow the process down just to watch.
That's all for this tutorial. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can keep up to date as new sessions are added to this series. Thanks for watching.